One of the things that you will no doubt hear uh, talked about throughout your career here at uh, uh, at CCU is, uh, and I, I mention it explicitly in a number of my classes, is the idea of uh, the big five or the f uh, five distinct personality dimensions uh, that people oftentimes uh, uh, display. And that's what we have here. This is, again, one of these tables that are worth filling out just for your study purposes. Um, and essentially, the, the big five, and you could, you could actually take each one of these and uh, uh, grade yourself, if you will. And, and the uh, acrostic that's very useful to remember these by is CANOE, um, the conscientiousness, the, um, uh, <laughs> I can't believe I'm forgetting it, agreeableness, uh, neuroticism, which has to do with emotional stability, openness, and extroversion. And uh, these big five are part of that. So you can fill this in. Uh, this is the, the conscientiousness one. And, and essentially, each person uh, really varies along each of these dimensions. There's no exact uh, conscientiousness. Uh, the agreeable um, this, there are more people that are agreeable slash easygoing uh, uh, example of that. Uh, neuroticism is it has to do with the uh, volatility of the mood that somebody would have. So they very uh, tend to be very calm versus very anxious or insecure or restless. And then <clears throat> openness. Uh, some people we oftentimes take advantage of because they seem so gullible. Uh, and so some people will be far more practical uh, and needing a routine and the other people that, that fall on a variety scale like are very independent minded. And then the final one is extroversion, introversion. Um, and uh, in a lot of ways, you could just basically place yourself on any one of these dimensions from disorganized to organized, from ruthless to soft-hearted, etc., and and essentially uh, these traits appear to be stable in adulthood. About 50% are inheritable or heritable, so uh, they're they're stable in adulthood. Uh, once somebody is, it doesn't mean they are always this way, but they're relatively stable. Uh, 50% of is uh, heritable. In other words, uh, essentially, uh, I will have a certain loading that comes along with uh, the people that I am related to, uh, moms and dads, etc. Uh, they are typically descriptive of people around the world. Uh, this this is um, uh, universal human. Uh, descriptive around the world. Uh, so in other words, these categories will apply uh, cross-culturally. Um, and the, uh, the other aspect here is typically uh, they are predictive of other characteristics. And so if, if someone is, uh, falls in this agreeable range, then a lot of times we can look at that and say uh, it probably will have something to do with how flexible they are. See, if I'm suspicious and I work in a workplace, then I may not be very flexible because I need my, my routine, I need to be able to know, versus people that just trust people in authority and will go with what they tell them. And that's, that's a good example of the predictive quality of these big five that we look at. So locating somebody along these dimensions uh, provides a fairly comprehensive view of their personality itself. And I'd encourage you, just for the, for the kicks of it, uh, to, where would you place yourself along these dimensions? How would you describe yourself along these dimensions in order to uh, see how they, uh, how they would work in your case?
so how would you describe yourself using these dimensions? And uh, writing a short uh, paragraph, not paragraph, but how you'd see yourself gives somebody a pretty clear picture of how you actually are seen as well. What's even more interesting is uh, asking others to do this for you and pay attention to what they see and say because a lot of times we don't come across like we uh, think we do and because we have this self-serving bias that comes into play and that's part of the backdrop to these personality factors. So uh, the big five, conscientiousness, agreeableness, neuroticism, uh, openness, and extroversion. Uh, don't confuse, when you hear the word neuroticism, it's not that we're saying somebody's neurotic. It has to do with stability of mood, and that's, uh, that's the key to remember here when we're talking about uh, uh, this particular dimension. Uh, you probably all know somebody who's pretty even-keeled and uh, easygoing, and then the people that are really quite volatile. They, they, uh, they react in dramatic uh, ways, no matter what the particular news might be. Now, one of the uh, key questions or um, important uh, controversies, I suppose, or debates um, Uh, controversy, that's a terrible spelling of it, um, controversy or debate that occurs in uh, talking about traits and, and so forth really has to do with uh, persistence over time, um, not just stability, but persistence over time. Um, as the little cartoon uh, makes clear, uh, the guy was a Harley rider, and even in his old age, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he's, his rocking chair looks like a Harley again. So although people's traits seem to persist over time, uh, people that are critics of the trait perspective note that human behavior uh, uh, varies from situation to situation. And the, the question is, is personality situational, or can we actually... Um, uh, predict or understand somebody's behavior in terms of stability. So in, in the critics' view, what they say is that traits are actually um, uh, a weak predictor of behavior. Uh, and uh, that's from a, a critic critic's point of view. Um, and, and that's what one one, peop, one person might say, or a group of people would say, that, that are really critical of the trait perspective. Um, and, and generally, and as a general rule, psychology is not terribly good at predicting human behavior. That's the bottom line. For example, being con conscientious on one occasion is only modestly related to being conscientious on another equation, uh, occasion. And so the question is, is it just simply situational? Are, are our personalities themselves situationally determined or, uh, <clears throat> or are, are they, in other words, I am what I am in a situation or is there something that I bring into it that um, is consistent over time? And that's one of the debates around uh, what we're talking about here with uh, trait uh, perspectives. The people that are defending the trait perspective um, are, make, the, make the comment, essentially, uh, that despite these variations, a person's average behavior, and that's what the focus is, is that the average behavior still adheres to the trait itself. And so uh, these behaviors uh, stay the same in spite of what uh, the situation might present. And so you, we have quite a debate that goes on in this particular area. Clearly, I think we, we can say that we have a distinct personality traits that are consistent over time. Um, that are that really do define us, and they don't really change. And then perhaps on the periphery um, of our personality, you might make the case that these uh, 
these are more malleable uh, or changeable in in what happens uh, to the situation itself. So the core situ personality traits really don't uh, change, but the ones that are a little bit more malleable or on the periphery uh, tend to be uh, more changeable as time goes on. Ultimately, what research is saying to us is uh, this, is that uh, research suggests that um, our traits are socially significant. So that's, uh, uh, that's the one point. They are socially significant. So in other words, if I am more of an introvert, uh, that will have a direct impact on the social environment I place myself in, but it also has an impact on uh, how I interact with that uh, uh, particular social environment. Uh, they, they influence our health. Uh, how I see my health is related to my traits. If I, um, or if I am more uh, dramatic, I may react more to particular things. They obviously influence our thinking um, in terms of how I see the world, whether I see it in a trusting way or whether I see it in a suspicious way. And then finally, uh, they have a direct impact on our job performance and what kinds of jobs I tend to be uh, attracted to, how well I do in these jobs, and things of that sort. And th those are the key component parts that are important to take note of when we're actually talking about um, our traits themselves. So there's a flexibility, but there's also a stability. So and in our traits and how we interact with the world. So flexibility and stability are uh, uh, key to understanding uh, human personality itself. Uh, now, let's turn our attention to uh, social cognitive theories of, of personality, which are every bit as important, and this particular area has been uh, quite influential in, in later days here when we're talking about, excuse me, human personality. 